In this video, the focus will be on creating interior noise for a fractured geometry to produce interesting refractions for rendering. As the video goes on, I swap out the geometry for a more complex shaped one that has more sides for light to bounce on and adding even more detail to the image. This is a three-part video series on fracturing geometry, adding details and noise, and lastly, material blending. This video is a direct continuation from a previous video titled Fracturing by Material Types, which sets up the basics of the scene. If you're new to Houdini, please check out that video first. The third part of the video is focused on material blending in Redshift and closes and completes the project. So let's go to the material, uh, material frac. Here, geometry for primitives we have different groups. It has created an inside and outside group. Now this is, if you've ever worked with the Voronoff fracture, this is very, you'll know what these two groups mean. In order to illustrate the outside and inside groups, I'm gonna hook up a blast node to isolate them. So I'm gonna hook the blast to the geometry output of the RBD fracture. Why? Because we're viewing it on the geometry tab, uh, geometry output of this RBD material fracture node in the primitives. So we want to blast on the geometry output primitives. And what do I want to blast? I want to isolate the inside primitives. Delete non-selected. So this will give us only the inside pieces. Flip it. This is the outside. If I'll just put outside, so this is the outside. Now I'm gonna just color this black because we're not gonna be using this, just for debugging purposes. I'm gonna color this. I wanna color the outside pieces. I'm gonna give it a color of, uh, let's give it a color of orange. But I only want to color the in uh, outside. The outside primitives. Point. Oh, sorry, not this one. Class. So the color node class is not point. It's primitive. Constant. Uh, outside. I want to put down an exploded view just to make sure that I'm still doing this correctly. Okay, so the outside pieces are being colored. Now I'm going to hook this color to the input of the RBD interior detail. So. Once we click this or click the exploded, it's being applied. So that's another thing with the RBD tools. You can always put nodes in between the RBD tool nodes. It's not like this has three outputs. The next node that you put down has to have at least three inputs in order to plug in. You can always put things in the middle like this, a color node, if you want to color it differently. You can always put other nodes in between to modify uh, the geometry constraints or the proxy you can modify this any way you want so you're not you can think outside of the box it doesn't have to be three inputs three outputs now this color node i will delete later on it's only for clarity so you can clearly see what the rbd interior noise is doing this rbd interior noise has its own color as well but i'm not i'm not there yet i'm going to explain that a little later so bear with me for this color node it, it's gonna go away so let's talk about the detail size the smaller this number is the more resolution you're gonna have for the noise this is the size of the detail if if the details are more smaller you're gonna have more details the smaller this the detail size the more noise you can stick into it into the interior so I'm going to put 0.1. I want more noise. So you're starting to see this. There's more There's more polygons generated. Let's take a closer look only at this piece. Let's focus on this piece. So I'm going to put it back to 0.25. So it's way less polygons. 0.1. We have more polygons. So we're capable of more resolution. Now I'm going to go even further. 0.05 so we have way more resolution now uh way more polygon uh noise right now the noise is very weak i don't know if you can tell there's a bit of if i go let me put down another exploded but hook it up to this one it's going to get a little messy so this is the node what it 
looked before the interior detail. This is what it looks like after the interior detail. We have way more resolution and it's not flat now. You can see this white line. It's trying to tell you this is what it is beef what it was before and you can start to see a little bit of displacement it's going down and up it's not exactly this it's not exactly on this white line now hopefully this will become more apparent when i turn up the noise amplitude so this is the strength of the noise let's go 0 0.3 okay so it's uh, it's a lot more apparent Let, let's push this even further to make this more clear Okay, so this is a lot of noise. It's, it's really deforming the geometry in the interior. What is nice about this RBD interior detail is that if you look at this surface, it is clean. Now we have a bit of protrusion here, like the noise is a little too strong. It's sticking, it's coming from the back, the interior, and it's coming out to the outside. We're going to get into a little bit of that. There's actually some parameters in the displacement scaling that you can adjust to avoid this. But out of the box, this is pretty clean. If you see my previous video, I, it was elaborate set of steps that you have to go through to isolate the outline edges and determine which ones was the surface and all that do in order to get this clean cut. The RBD interior does that all for you. So this is very handy. This is where I, I'm going to delete the color noise, a uh, color node. Actually, I'll just ignore it. In the RBD interior detail, it has its own visualized noise scale. So this will color all the pieces automatically for you according to where the noise is. So purple, let me close this up. So purple is the outside surface. Purple means that there's no noise. The red, the red is where most most of the noise is placed at and there's a, a, a gradient color drop to purple so this is where the strength of the noise starts to die down to these edge so red is where it there's the real interesting parts of the noise is happening we're given this clamp and what this clamp does if i put this clamp to zero so it's flat it basically clamps how, where do you want the noise to begin? At what depth level? Well, I'm saying zero. So begin nowhere, no noise. That's why, it, so that's, that's the reason why it's flat. Now I want the noise to begin at a, a certain depth level. So let me slide the slider to the right. So we're starting to see noise. It's starting to begin at a depth percentage of 0.2. So that's like uh, okay, this is point zero point two. So this is twenty percent. Begin the noise at the twenty percent depth level. So that's like twenty percent of its deepest interior area. As we move the slider to the right, we will start to see more and more displacement spread outwards to the surface. So let's move this over. So it's getting sharper. You're starting to see this displacement closer and closer to the purple surface. Now, because the noise amplitude is quite high, I'm going to lower this. But this clamp acts as a sort of, where do you want the noise to begin? At what depth, at what depth level? Now let's stick 0.35. Now the next one, the depth to noise bias. This is basically saying, um, th this is my noise setting. Where do you want to start seeing it? Like what, at what depth? Now this is a clamp. And you might be thinking, well, well, what's the difference between this clamp depth percentage and this depth per noise bias? The clamp defines the range in which the noise will appear in the depth level. This noise bi bias gives it more control within the clamp range. The depth noise bias operates in a similar fashion to the clamp depth such that the 0 to 1 slider refers to the depth range for each fractured piece. The value of the slider, say if it's at 0, then there's no noise. 
if it's at 0.16, it tells the no node it tells the node to focus most of the noise in 16% of the depth range. The difference between the two sliders is that the depth noise bias slider gives a soft fall off. The clamp is a sharp range. The depth noise bias slider is more useful when you use the ramp because you're given more control over the noise at each value of the depth level. Here's an example of how we can use this to, so to soften the noise on the edge of the surface. I might be thinking that, well, the noise is starting to appear way too close over here. Like if I didn't want noise to start showing up on the edge of the surface, like a certain depth level, only when it gets deeper within this range, that's where I can use this slider. So this can slide it inwards. One, another way to think of this is that this bottom slider, this bias slider here, moves the purple inward, controlling how much the purple grows and shrinks with the depth. Bias slider moves it from the outsides to the inside. And the clamp moves the displacement inside to the outside. And if that's a little easier to think of it, you can try using that way to think of it. Now it gets even more interesting when you click, when you check this, use depth noise ramp. So you can give it, a, you, you have even more control. So say I want, so maybe I want at depth level, I want it to have more control and maybe up and then down. So it has like, layers of noise you can do that as well this would create something super interesting now let's see what this looks like in the render so this is what we had before so i'm gonna save this because of the detailed noise that we have added here it's starting to light is starting to refract differently and it's starting to create these uh more interesting reflections or refractions within within our geometry so this is where i start to swap out the simple version of the crystal geometry for the more complex one that i had created so let's go over here so this is the crystal shape that i created I want to bring in this shape, the one with holes cut through this. This will allow more interesting light refractions. So this was what we had before. This is the one that I want to bring in. So let's go back over here. Let's change this to our out shape. Let's see what this does. As you can start to see, this creates more complexity into the render due to the complex light, light refractions that is happening inside the geometry. Now, say we want a more precise RBD interior detail to form. There's a spot here where you can provide an SDF for it. This will increase the RBD interior detail has a fourth input for the SDF of the geometry. If the noise is pumped up too high, the interior faces start to stick out towards the surface outside faces, which is unwanted. The SDF, which is the fourth input, will help Houdini figure out how to fix this. I'm going to purposely create bad geometry using the RBD interior detail node by exaggerating some of the parameters in order to show you what the SDF uh, input of the RBD interior detail is. That's the fourth input. I want to demonstrate what that does. We're not seeing it. Let me turn this off. And let me go back to the simple shape for one second. Oh, uh, yeah. This is what I wanted to show you. You're starting to see the red coming out on the surface. Because it doesn't, uh, th the noise is way too strong. If we start to go up, yeah, there you go. See, it's starting to come out here. 
And what this will do is that when you go, when you don't explode it, so when it's like as is like this, it will start to come out here. You're starting to see the noise come out on the surface. We can fix this by getting the SDF of our geometry and plugging that into the fourth input. This will tell Houdini where the surface of our geometry is positioned with higher accuracy. Now, I had already created a VDB to this object. So this is just the VDB plug in here. So that's get, that cleans it up quite a bit. So without it, so all the interior faces start to stick out to the surface. But by plugging this in, this increases the accuracy. It'll clamp it down. Now my VDB isn't the best right now because it's not it's missing the holes. So this increases the accuracy for the RBD detail. Now let me go back here. I can actually give it a better VDB. So this is the one I'm using. Let's do this one. Let's do this. This is the better VDB to use. Let's go back up. I'm going to return all the parameters back to normal. So I only had the noise pumped up just to show you what the SDF uh, and how it works for the RBD interior detail node. I adjusted some of the values on the ramp just to get a more interesting look. So let's see what it looks in the render. The additional complex shapes from the geometry combined with the interior noise displacement creates more interesting reflections and refractions from the light bounces. The next video will demonstrate on blending two different types of materials onto our single fracture geometry to add even more variety to the render. Please check out material blending using Redshift in Houdini. Some of my videos are getting quite long, and as I move on to different topics, the topics will become even more difficult to demonstrate and require even more explanations. So I need to find a way to make these tutorials more digestible for the brain. I'm hoping by splitting the tutorials into shorter videos will make it better. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.